Hey everybody, today I'm going to be doing a video on how to build multi-channel routing inside of Reaper for um, FX. Some of the really useful features that you can use this for is if you have some plugins or something that you would like to add effects to individual things inside of ESTI. Uh, for this example, I'm going to be using Easy Drummer. It has a nice little built-in routing section that makes this really easy to understand. So um, the first thing we're going to do is I'll show you the way Reaper has it natively built in to do it and then after that I'll show you how to do it manually that way if you get tripped up or get a little bit lost you can always rebuild it yourself. So I'm going to bring up Easy Drummer here and you can see we got the kit and I'll bring over the mixer. The first important thing to notice on the mixer is every single one of these guys down here is all set to output one. Those are what we're going to be changing here after we build some channels in Reaper so that we can move it all to different tracks. So as it goes right now, I'll play it for you. You can see everything is coming through this one track right here. All right, so now to get this going so that we can start building multi-channel effects, um, the easiest way Reaper has to do it is you just right click on whatever plugin is you want to build that channel and go down here to this option that says build multi-channel routing for output of selected effects. We're going to hit that. It's going to tell us all this list of all these new tracks that it's making. We'll hit yes. And now we have all these new tracks. Now if you look, if I hit play, everything is now coming through output one, which it is set to. So now for our drums, say we want to be able to manipulate each thing outside inside a Reaper, we can go through and start naming and signing things. For example, I'm going to make number one here my overheads. Number two, I'll make for the uh, rooms or ambient mics. Number three, I'll go ahead and do the kick. Number four, I'll do the snare, toms, so on and so forth. So now all you have to do to get these things to come through the individual channels is come down here and change the corresponding output. So we're going to get find our overheads. We're going to leave those as one since overheads is already number one. Ambience we're going to set to output two. The kick we're going to set to output three. The snare we're going to set to output four. And then the toms I'm going to set to output five. Now if I hit play on this thing we should notice every single track routing to its own individual track outside of Reaper. All right, so as you can see there, every single track has its own unique thing going on. You can see them metering in their own tracks, which gives us volume control. For example, if I'm playing and I want to pull the snare drum down a little bit, I got that here without having to pull up the uh, easy drummer GUI. Um, if I want to build effects into it, I can put effects onto just my uh, snare drum or just my kick drum, which is really nice for some compression or EQ, or for example, being to do uh, a few other things like reverbs or things like that. So let's say, for example, you've built in your routing here, and uh, it, it builds in a lot of tracks when you do it automatically like this. Let's say you've got your routing and you've deleted these tracks, but you want to be able to add one more in to send the compressor track to, and we forgot that. The important thing to know here is to take a look at the I.O. dialog right here on the MIDI track that we created, because this is what is telling... Uh, this drum track to go to multiple tracks. You can see here the master parent send has been disabled so it's no longer sending this track directly to the master bus. Also the parent channels 1 through 32 that's what's setting up those uh, stereo pairs since these are sent since these guys down here are sent in stereo. Um, basically what we have here is each one sends a stereo pair so you can see audio 1 and 2 here, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, all the way up to 9 and 10 we're having Tom so if we want to add a new one for a compressor, we just add a compressor track, call it compressor. Now all we got to do is go to the IO dialog on the MIDI track, create a new send to the compressor, and make that the next stereo pair, which is going to be stereo source um, 11 and 12. Now when I come in, we see Tom's number 5 was our last one, so once I switch this to uh, output 6, now we should see that stereo pair routing out to this compressor track right here in Reaper, and let's check that out. So as you can see, that would give you a lot of flexibility, and it makes it so you can stay out of your GUI a lot more often and stay in Reaper 
which uh, really enhances the workflow, makes it a lot easier to keep your, your, your process streamlined. Plus it enables you to do other things and other techniques that would be otherwise unavailable. So that's it for this lesson. I'll have a little bit more on uh, some parallel compression and a few other things in the upcoming weeks. Thanks for checking it out.